Just like rap music in the late 80s, black art is on the radar now. As actors, rap artists, and athletes are buying back into black artists again. On the rise out of Brooklyn is an artist by the name of Steve Coggle, whose style and flair reminds you of a Basquiat, but with his own twist. Steve has managed to build his name in the art world and build friendships with people like Swiss Beats and Michael B. Jordan. Not only are they friends, but they're customers. My name is Stephen Kogel. I'm an artist. Uh, I was born in Brooklyn, grew up in East New York. Uh, and basically, my art schooling, I want to say, a big part of my art schooling took place at uh, the library on New Locks Avenue, New Locks Branch at Library. That's where I learned a lot of my stuff and where I got various art books and learned my craft and my technique from there. That, like, no art school. Nope. Like that Lee J. Ames book I told you about was at that library. No, no art schooling. Just always been painting and drawing. Uh, where I learned technique was from Lee J. Ames, where I learned use of color. Oh, that's what I forgot to tell you. Use of color was. <clears throat> so again, my parents, they didn't thrust the arts in me. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, in our households, they don't really put art like you know, as, as, as something that's an initiative. As much as I was drawing and stuff like that, you would have think that, hey, they probably would have took me to an art museum. No, they never did. So what they did take me to, like, museum and natural history, shit like that. Uh, but they took me to the Bronx Zoo. So, you know, I'm a kid, growing up in the 70s, go to the Bronx Zoo. When walking back, you see the elevated platforms of the train, and this is in the age of graffiti. So the train's going by, you see the colors and the graffiti and everything. And I saw that, and that was it. I was like, I don't know what that is, but I gotta do that. And that's right there really what really put me into wanting to do art. You know, I mean, of course, I never did anything on the streets and the walls, ain't doing that, but I'm just saying, just in general, seeing that right there, all those wide array of colors, that made me say, okay, I know that I wanna be an artist. So. It was the technical, the technical aspect was from that Lee J. Ames book, but the uh, the whole realm, the whole spectrum was just seeing the art on the train, the subways. So graffiti definitely has been a major influence for me in terms of my artwork. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be 47. I've been drawing as far as like creating art and stuff like that since. So um, I want to say since six years old, I've been drawing. All right. I don't know, you know, nobody in my family were artists, so it wasn't like I was influenced by anybody or, or you know, any family members. It was just me as a kid just doodling, right. you know, wanted to do that. And then, you know, watching cartoons and, you know, Popeye and Batman and Superman and drawing these characters and all that stuff. So, you know, I just was a kid just doing that. It was always something that kind of stuff. Yeah. I've just been drawing since I was a little kid, you know, and at the time I didn't, you know, my brothers weren't alive yet, so it's just me as a kid, right. keeping to myself and and just doing stuff. Wait, I grew up in East New York. I lived on I lived on Brooklyn, Van Sickle, between New Locks and Hector. Still Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know what? It's funny about that is because um, you know people say there's like a realness in my artwork, and I and I think it attributes to where I grew up at. Because it was, you know, you had to, and then no matter what you do, you know, if you consider yourself to be a ladies' man and you was front like you was a ladies' man, then, you know, your friends or cats will be like, they'll point to the baddest chick in the neighborhood, like, all right, go holler at her. Go get her number and see what's up. Right. Or if you try to portray yourself as a tough guy, you know, I'm like, all right, go step to Duke right there. He nice with the hands and see what happens. Right. You know, and so it, it, that whole thing of just, being who you are and don't have no fakeness about you resonates in my work and people see that and they say it doesn't look like you know like I'm playing and you know I never understood what that meant before and then later on in life as far as, as the career as an artist I start seeing certain things you know that uh, artists were doing and there's nothing wrong with being influenced but some artists would see other works and try to be gimmicky in what they're saying you know whether it be 
saying certain expressions or saying certain sayings and stuff like that. I remember one time there was this black artist. I went to a party once and there was an artist there with his girlfriend, whatever. And he he had something, it was like it was like a blank canvas. And, and he put something like nigga, nigga something or nigga something. He put something like blatantly you just knew he just wanted to cause controversy with that. Right. He knew that people were going to see that and be like, they were going to react to it. And for you just coming right out and just blatantly, okay, nigga. It was like, you know, it, it's been said so many times. And and it got to the point where now people feel immune to it. To my black people feel immune to it or... Or what some of the hip hop community do, they'll say, well, we, we've, like, I've seen what things Ice Cube and Jay Z was like, oh, well, we flipped it, we made it our own. And, I mean, that person I, I don't agree with. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I have a problem with that, because when I hear nigga, I think Emmett Till. Right. You know, I don't think, like, you know, I look at you as my brother. Right. I look at any other black person as my brother. And any, any of my friends, they all, you know, they all say it, but they know me, like, me personally, just on some old, my brother. And I've been that way since from small. You know, but again, it's just someone just doing that and artistically just trying to get a reaction. What do you consider your style? Um, you call it anything? Yeah, um, the expression is called neo expressionism. And is that, that you no, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. That was that's a style. That's a style. That was during the time of, of, of course, Basquiat. Um, um, because you had, during the 50s, you had the abstract expressionists. You had uh, William de Kooning, uh, 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 Jackson Pollock. So expressionism is just in a form of style of what you're doing. There's elements of what uh, uh, cubism, elements of abstract art. But neo-expressionism, or rather new expressionism, is just basically just a, a, a term that was just coined with the new expressionists coming through. Again, like I said, with Basquiat and uh, uh, Julian Schnabel or uh, there's another artist, Francesco Clemente. These are all new artists that were <clears throat> taking images and just making it their own. Whether they would be influenced by other artists, but they would turn it to their own. So to see, the thing is, is that like with Basquiat, Basquiat took other artists' work, not stole their work. He took their work and he was influenced by it and made it his own and did his own thing. His, he took their, you know, he was influenced by what it is that they were doing. See, the problem is like a lot of the artists coming up now they all look at Basquiat because Basquiat was kind of like a success story in a sense of he got famous overnight. You know, he died relatively early, died at 28. But he had a short career span that was really, uh, uh, it kind of excelled very quickly. You know, from 18 to 28, in that short time, this guy is a guy that put out like over 2,000 paintings, <clears throat> drawings and whatnot, and got successful relatively quick. In that time, there are people that have been painting for that long and still haven't even got to where he got to that level in terms of what, what people would deem successful, you know, making a lot of money and getting cash over hand and stuff like that, which is probably also the reason why he wasn't able to handle all of that, you know. And you got artists nowadays that want that same measure of success just as quick. And in the age of Instagram, where it's like things are so instantaneous, they think that, oh, I can. I can do like he's doing and get the same way. And it's like, no, it was just a, it was just a matter of right place and right time. You know, hanging out with Andy Warhol, who at the time, though Andy Warhol's career kind of was going on a downturn, but Andy Warhol provided that access that Basquiat was able to take and capitalize on. Because one, he was a genius. He was a, t he was a very talented individual. And the thing that always gets me upset is that, you know, a lot of people see the words that Basquiat was putting in his paintings. These artists nowadays think, see, they, don't, they really are not looking at the genius of this man and what he was doing. They're just thinking, like, they don't comprehend the words that he was putting in, the, in his work. And so you see people that are trying to emulate Basquiat by just putting nonsensical words in their paintings, which makes absolutely no sense. You know, someone to see something and, like, say, I don't know, uh, say, Jack and Jill ran up the hill, right? So when we... Take, so they will take those words from th that sentence and be like, Jack Hill runs up, you know? Just making any old thing. Because they're thinking, well, that's what Basquiat did. And they're like, no, that's not what he did. There was a method to what he was doing. Did you know him? Oh, did, oh, no, 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 not at all. No, no. I mean, because the time when Basquiat was around, I was what? You know, when he was really 
taking off like in that early 82. I, you know, one, I was in Brooklyn. I was in sixth grade. I wasn't in the East Village or Soho for that matter. I didn't know who Basquiat was until I took a class at SVA. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I painted the model. And then my professor was like, for the class, was like, oh my God, you paint like Basquiat. And I was like, who? Like, fuck is that? And then, and then the professor was like, read the, uh, watch the movie. So I said, all right. So I rented the movie. That was the movie that Julian Schnabel did with Jeffrey Wright. I watched it and I was like, my work don't look like that. And then years later, I found out that uh, Julian Schnabel didn't get permission from the estate to use the actual Basquiat paintings. So he had to create his own paintings. So I was like, well, they're yeah, right. My stuff didn't look like his. So when I went back, I told him, I said, I watched the movie, my stuff don't look like that. And then he was like, all right, uh, go, go get a book. So I went and go see a Basquiat book. And the first time I seen it, I was like, wow, fuck. <laughs> I was like, shit. Because, you know, as an artist, you want to have your own identity. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be biting off nobody else. And when I saw it, I was just like, damn. Because it looks so familiar. Does it? Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I mean. The stuff you're doing now. No, the stuff I'm doing, I, I mean, it depends on who sees it, you know, because everybody, sometimes people see it because they need a point of reference. Right. So that may be their point of reference. That they may, you know, some people took, said that my work reminds them of, I've heard Rotsko, I've heard uh, Willem de Kooning, heard a little bit of Picasso. Um, so it, it depends on who who sees it. How hard is it for black artists? Um, I think it's very hard because one, you know how is that case of you have a black person, like white people only know one black person. So they expect whatever that black person say is supposed to be like repre you know, representative of all black people. Whether it be like say we had like a Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson or or anybody to that matter. They feel like well if he says it, then that's how they all feel. Like as if we don't have a difference of opinion. So the same thing like with art, there isn't really an artist that people now really, I mean, you got some successful artists, I'm not gonna say you don't. You got Kehinde Wiley, you know, Kerry James Marshall, you have these, but there's a lot more black artists that are out there. And some of those artists, yeah, they stand out because, you know, again, I mean, that's not saying their work isn't great, it's really good work, <clears throat> but it's just that, in terms of so many artists being out there, the accessibility, you know, to that wider audience is not really there. It's not really there.